Ayo, it me, Nemi Noxwood, and welcome to my flat. <laughs> so the other day I put up a post on Instagram asking you guys to send me some questions because I wanted to do a Q&A as my introduction to YouTube, I guess. And bloody hell did you guys come through, like... <laughs> There are so many questions. I may have to split this in two. We'll see. Apologies in advance if I butcher anyone's Instagram handle. Here we go. Lady Elizabeth asks, how old are you? Oh, you know how it is. One stops counting after a few centuries. Jokes aside, I am 26 years way too bloody old. Polina Ranker asks, what's your favorite brand and eye palette? I assume you mean makeup brand. Um. I don't have just one favourite, so I'm going to mention a couple. Lunatic Cosmetic Labs, definitely. NYX Cosmetics, and even though I've only got one thing from them, uh, Black Moon Cosmetics. I also don't have just one favourite eye palette, so I'm going to mention one from each of those brands. The Supernatural Palette by Lunatic Cosmetics. The Ultimate Phoenix Palette by NYX Cosmetics, um, which I am obsessed with currently, and the Orb of Light palette by Black Moon Cosmetics, which is the reason I am already counting them as a favourite brand. <laughs> Glenn Irish asks, does Basil identify as goth? His spiked hair gives off more of a new metal vibe, so I just thought I'd ask. Basil, if you didn't know, is my hedgehog, and um, I don't think he identifies as goth. I think he probably identifies as sleepy and hungry, which same. Darkly Wraith asks, if you wanted to marry your favourite musician, which would you choose? I, um, I have to, I have to say Danny Filth. I have to, that's the rule. Um, <laughs> to quote Emma Thompson's character in Love Actually, I love him and true love lasts a lifetime. <laughs> if by any chance you're watching this Danny, I'm sorry. <laughs> The Fairy Hollow asks, where do you draw inspiration for your iconic makeup looks and outfit ensemble? Ah, oh, thanks. Honestly, everywhere, I guess. Um, obviously Instagram and YouTube, but I think mostly I probably draw inspiration from everywhere outside of those things because I don't want to get caught up in wanting to replicate what I see um, online. This is a difficult question to answer because honestly everywhere like there isn't really anything that isn't inspiring sometimes you just have to look deeper than surface level like music for instance i draw inspiration from music a lot um but it's not just the music itself i'll draw inspiration from the story that's being told from the album cover from what the band looks like you can sort of dissect one area of inspiration and find many different sort of subcategories that you can pull inspiration from and I, I do that with everything really. The main areas are probably music, literature, World of Warcraft, <laughs> films, nature, architecture, historical periods, the weather. Honestly, everywhere. Like, everywhere. By the way, we're working with natural lighting here so if I end up shrouded in darkness. I guess I'll have reached my final form. Eerie Ellie asks, which tattoos will you get next? So I'm working on filling out my right arm at the moment. My next piece is gonna be a mermaid and I'm getting her in October. Mavzar, I guess. Mavzar, Mauzar, I don't know, um, asks, favorite bands, top five maybe. This is so hard because I love so many different bands. Um, my favourite band is Cradle of Filth and that will never change. <laughs> the rest I'm gonna name will be bands I love and I'm currently extra obsessed with. So I'll say Hapax, Moonspell, Crew Lies and Neobla Viscaris. Oceana asks, what's your favourite movie, book, candle scent, YouTube channel, mythical creature and Halloween related thing or activity? <laughs> right. I don't have one favourite of any of these things, so I'm going to have to name a few for each of these. Um, my favourite films 
are probably um, Labyrinth and Sleepy Hollow and also Van Helsing, um, which I know is lame and I don't care. <laughs> My favourite books, um, I'm gonna do standalones for this, so Dracula and the Picture of Dorian Gray will probably forever be tied for, um, for favourites, but others include the Thirteen and a Half Lives of Captain Blue Bear, Wuthering Heights, The Necrophiliac, which is technically a novella but still counts, The Last Unicorn and Spinning Silver. My favourite candle scents. I like candles that smell sort of edible, <laughs> sort of sweet and spicy. Stuff like apple cinnamon, salted caramel, pumpkin pie, chai latte, that sort of thing. For YouTube channels, I'm going to skip all of the spooky people because obviously I love you. Um, so instead, I'm gonna say Sarah Hawkinson, Ask a Mortician, Bailey Sarian, Quickened, and Ready to Glare. My favourite mythical creatures are definitely vampires, dragons, and mer people. Halloween related thing or activity. So, um, Halloween isn't much of a thing in Denmark, but every October Tivoli and Copenhagen do Halloween for a few weeks and the whole park sort of transforms into this autumnal spooky wonderland. There's a haunted house event and loads of little shops and booths with Halloween decor and autumnal drinks and snacks and <laughs> pumpkins and ghosts and cobwebs and skeletons everywhere and um yeah so obviously i love that <laughs> my friends and i usually go several times <laughs> so that is my favorite activity dyson thornwood asks can you do a makeup tutorial and what are your plans for halloween yeah i mean i'd like to do makeup tutorials um hopefully in the future when i've figured out how to do a setup that's a little bit better for it and when I'm a little bit more comfortable with filming because right now I'm sort of teetering on the verge of awkward constantly so yeah hopefully in the future and for Halloween throughout October I will be doing some spooky things including going to Tivoli probably at least three times <laughs> and I'm also going on a quick trip to England to see Cradle of Filth at the London Palladium, which kind of counts as a Halloween related activity, right? <laughs> On the 31st of October, however, I might go and see a comedy show with one of my besties, but that is a bit up in the air. J. Armin Repass asks, who is your favourite author and poet? Love the look, by the way. Thank you. Um, again with the favourites. <laughs> there are so many. I'm gonna pick two of each. So for authors, I'm going to say Naomi Novik and Oscar Wilde, and poets Christina Rossetti and Lord Alfred Tennyson. Doom Honey asks a lot of questions. <laughs> um, I'm going to break this up and answer each one in turn, I think. What's your book about? Uh, this, is, this is the one question that I don't think I can answer. Um, the thing is, that I know that if I share too much about it online, there is a risk that a future agent will consider it already published, and I don't want to risk that. <laughs> For now, what I can tell you is that it's a fantasy trilogy, and it takes place partly in our world, but primarily in a parallel world where magic has advanced over technology. Also, it has mermaids. Favourite ever scene from a movie? Probably something from Sleepy Hollow because that film is just an eyegasm from start to finish. The fragmented scenes where Ichabod remembers his mother and what happened to her really made an impression on me the first time I saw it. So probably either those or the Peach Dream ballroom scene in Labyrinth. A quote you love or one you try to live by? I don't have one that I try to live by, but there are plenty that I love. So here is one from Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. There are men who are wolves inside and want to eat up other people to fill their bellies. 
That is what was in your house with you all your life. But here you are with your brothers, and you are not eaten up, and there is not a wolf inside you. You have fed each other, and you kept the wolf away. That is all we can do for each other in the world, to keep the wolf away. What's something that totally blew your mind the first time you read, heard, saw, or learned it? That lianas grow from the ground and up. <laughs> so if you tried to grab one and swing through the trees like Tarzan, you'd likely fall on your ass. <laughs> it's been years since I learnt this and I'm still kind of pissed off that I was lied to for most of my life. <laughs> Also, this look is great, a alchemist skilled wildfire. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Linear Arts asks a lot of questions. <laughs> what is Basil's Hogwarts house? So Basil is chill, sleepy, affectionate, and always hungry. <laughs> so he's probably a Hufflepuff. If you could build your dream home, what would it look like? My dream home would be a 19th century flat with high stucco ceilings. All the furnishings would be heavy antique pieces of dark wood and leather and velvet. <laughs> the walls would be covered in mirrors, old picture frames, dead things and that sort of stuff. And there'd be books everywhere. Who is your favourite female singer? It is physically impossible for me to choose just one because there are so many amazing women vocalists out there and I listen to so many different genres of music that I just I can't. So I'm gonna give you a list that you didn't ask for. Lady Gaga, Lana Del Rey, Ramsey, Susie Sue, obviously, Lindsay Schoolcraft, love you lady, um, Christina Scabia of Lacuna Coil, Skin of Skunk and Nancy, Chelsea Wolfe, Amelia Bourne of Mürke, probably didn't pronounce that right, but whatever, and Cami Gilbert of Oceans of Slumber. Saren Heller asks, what are your favourite song and album by Cradle of Filth? You must be new here. <laughs> My favourite song by Cradle of Filth, and my favourite song of all time is Bathory Aria, and I never shut up about it. I want it played at my funeral, at my wedding, not necessarily in that order. Last time I saw them live, Danny dedicated it to me, and I, ever casual, burst into tears. My favourite album by them is, um, all of them, uh, but mostly it's a tie between Cruelty and the Beast and Godspeed on the Devil's Thunder and Damnation and the Day. <laughs> Lady Epi asks a fuckload of questions. Why did you study what you did? So I have a master's degree in English and honestly I was inspired to study English when I learned that Danny Filth did. <laughs> Why would you pick Transfiguration as your Hogwarts class? I would choose to teach Transfiguration because in my head, and this isn't going to make any sense really, but <laughs> in my head that is the Hogwarts equivalent of sort of extremely nerdy, complex literary analysis. And that is my forte and my favourite thing to work with. And also because Minerva McGonagall is probably the reason I wanted to be an academic in the first place. If you hear a noise, Basil just woke up and is now having breakfast. <laughs> favourite part about living in Denmark and least favourite? Aside from our social security, obviously, my favourite part of living in Denmark is probably that um, it's an old country and it's got a long and fascinating history that exists subtly in the fabric of our everyday lives and I really appreciate that. Which is a bit of a vague answer but I think that if you live in a country like that you'll probably know what I mean. My least favourite thing is the law of Yende which Wikipedia explains better than I can so let me just read you what the article says. The law of Yende is a code of conduct known in Nordic countries that portrays not conforming, doing things out of the ordinary, 
or being overtly personally ambitious as unworthy and inappropriate. The law of Yende is used generally in the Nordic countries as a sociological term to denote a condescending attitude towards individuality and personal success. This isn't prevalent everywhere, of course, but it definitely is where I grew up, and that is why I got the fuck out. Where would you visit if you had a no expenses trip of your dreams? There are loads of places I'd like to visit. Um, I really want to visit Salem, Massachusetts because, you know, witches. But I think the most expensive and inconvenient place I would like to visit is Australia, so let's go with that. My best friend lives in Sydney, so I would want to visit him and I'd also love to go cage diving with great white sharks. <laughs> and then I want to eat some greasy burgers, drink some hard cider and see some prog metal gigs. Nightmare Before Christmas or Beetlejuice? Definitely Nightmare Before Christmas. And lastly, favourite Disney film? Wait, do you even like Disney? <laughs> yes, I love Disney. And my favourite Disney film is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Space Witch 9 asks, how did your interest in religious iconography and symbolism come to be? I think that started when I was about four or five, because that was when The Hunchback of Notre Dame came out. <laughs> I was deeply fascinated with the cathedral, its art and its atmosphere, and I was obsessed with Frollo's character, and still am. <laughs> Obviously I was too young to understand exactly what it was about him that I found so interesting, but I understood just enough to see that his character sort of had layers which other Disney villains didn't really. Um, you know, evil mask is good, hypocrisy, prejudice, abstinence, combating, forbidden desire and all of that. The dichotomy between this, the sort of dark side of religion, and the beauty of love and acceptance which the film advocates, that's probably what started it. Well, that and the music. The Bells of Notre Dame and Hellfire are, in my opinion, some of the most beautiful pieces of music ever written. The last question comes from Medibel, one of my besties who says, please, if you could, recite your favourite poem and sing us a song if you're comfortable. Also, the look you are serving. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, yeah, okay. So all of my favourite poems are really long, so I'm not going to recite a whole one. I will read you the end of one of my favourite poems, which is The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock by T.S. Eliot. No, I am not Prince Hamlet, nor was meant to be. I'm an attendant lord, one that'll do to swell a progress, start a scene or two. Advise the prince, no doubt, an easy tool, deferential, glad to be of use, politic, cautious and meticulous, full of high sentence, but a bit of juice. At times, indeed, almost ridiculous, almost at times the fool. I grow old, I grow old. I shall wear the bottoms of my trousers rolled. Shall I part my hair behind? Do I dare to eat a peach? I shall wear white flannel trousers and walk upon the beach. I have heard the mermaids singing each to each. I do not think that they will sing to me. I have seen them riding seaward on the waves, combing the white hair of the waves blown back when the wind blows the water white and black. We have lingered in the chambers of the sea by sea girls wreathed with seaweed red and brown, till human voices wake us and we drown. And I guess I will end the video with singing a song. Hi, you may be wondering why the costume change? Well, <laughs> a few things happened since I filmed the rest of this Q&A. The first and most significant one being that um, I spent about six to eight hours editing it and then, like an idiot, I tried to move the project because my computer was having a bit of an aneurysm. And um, that made it worse. In fact, I lost all of the progress that I'd made editing, which is a bit of a harsh way to learn not to do that. However, 
When I first recorded this, I had a cold, which I made a disclaimer for, etc. But now that I have to redo all of my editing, I decided to take the opportunity to redo my singing as well. So now it sounds a lot better, so I'm not going to give any disclaimers. <laughs> I will, however, give you one small warning. <laughs> Turn down the volume of whatever device you're watching this on, because this is about to get loud. <laughs> So I will sing for you, and then I will cut back to past Nemi, wrapping up this whole thing. So without further ado, I will sing the start of my favourite song for you. This is my take on Bathory Aria by Cradle of Filth. Snuffed deep aside, as death left him pressing his crystal cold tears on the countess, benighted like your fated usher. The house of Bathory shrouded neath grief's dark facade. If thou ye are, but have wept in mourning by her side, I will have cast a sword down like storm beach to threat a drop and guide the ringer. My lips would have known enigmas of shadowy these stars. Where pleasures tell of passion, pain, remorse, this came freezing your breath on the rock and slip hushed unto whispers. Inhaling the pale winding moon and that crept through the crypt of hell, it was so lucidly slipped. Oh, Waxing eternal night entered her soul. Right, I I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to everyone who sent me a question on Instagram. If you've got any questions or suggestions for what you'd like to see on my channel, or you just want to chat, then write me in the comments. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of this and I will see you in another video. Bye guys.